I just want you guys to take control. If you are worried about our supply chains like everybody else is right now. Hi you guys, welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. Today we are going to be talking about our baby food making supplies. Okay, so at first I thought that we would do our next video on a recipe, but then I thought, Maybe we should probably go over the supplies to make the recipe first, right? Okay, so I don't want you to think that you have to have all this stuff pictured. These are just the things that I have that I have accumulated over 10 years. <laughs> and obviously some of the things like all of the appliances I use for other stuff. So coffee grinder, coffee grinder, emulsion blender, and food processor are all used in uh, several other applications. So. We don't tend to keep um, very many appliances that have only one use because we have such a small kitchen. So it has to be multi-use or it doesn't stay, except for the coffee pot. That one's always got a place on my counter. Okay, so let's begin with our appliances. So my go-to 100% first appliance that I go to and the first appliance that I ever got for making baby food is my emulsion blender. That blender cost me 13 bucks at Walmart and it has been going for years, okay? I think I might have actually bought two, but it's the same one, just like the newer version. Um, <laughs> uh, but that is my go-to. I will just cook up some apple, like throw apple in a pot and cook it up really quick and then use that and applesauce is done in like 10 minutes, not even, as long as it takes to skin an apple, cut it up and boil it, right? Um, so that works great for small batches. If I'm making really big batches of anything, then I'm gonna use my food processor. The food processor is great for when you need to do bigger batches of stuff. So that is, or when you need it, something really, really well pureed, okay? So that's, the food processor is great for that. And then the coffee grinder is a little bit different. We use the coffee grinder for any grains. You don't have to buy cereal, oatmeal cereal or rice cereal or any of the kinds of cereal that you buy. He's, <laughs> he's trying to eat the um, squeeze station. Uh, anyways, you don't have to buy any of those pre-made cereals from the store in the baby food aisle that are outrageously priced. Okay, you go and you get yourself a bucket of oatmeal and you can use a coffee grinder to grind it up and you will then have oatmeal cereal. It's that easy. Okay, so those are the three appliances that I highly recommend. Um, like I said, not necessary. You could have one or all of them. But um, I do, those are the three that I prefer and I use all the time. <laughs> okay, now, so for storage, there are several options. My favorite and my go-to are these squeeze pouches because he can just suck the baby food out of them, right? It is very convenient. You slide, so this is the Infantino squeeze station. No, I am not sponsored by them, but I wish I was because that would be super awesome. Um, been using it for four babies now. Um, okay, so what you do is you take your pouch and you're going to slide it into this and it locks in. It locks in. The bottom holds the lids. I have never actually put them in there when I'm doing it because, I mean, come on, I'm doing like a bunch at one time. But it does, they, it does have little pegs that you can set the lids on down at the bottom. Um, then you are going to screw on, screw, this screws onto the top of the tanner. <laughs> He's a fussy butt. Hey, hey, do you want? So this, that he's now going to want to eat, you take this and you push it down like that and it's going to fill it up with air. But then when you push it down, when you push it all the way down, the easiest way, don't pull it back up when it's still attached because you're going to suction the food back out of the pouch. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, so what you're going to do is you're going to unscrew, pull it off, and then remove 
then remove the, it's easier when it's wet. <laughs> um, and then you are going to remove this and go on to the next one, okay? So it is a little bit time consuming, but it's not bad at all. I love it. We did 26 pouches last night, um, Justin and I did, and it's not bad. Okay, so the hands down simplest option here is going to be an ice cube tray. You want to use a silicone one or one of the plastic ones with a silicone bottom because you can easily pop the you can easily pop the food out of them. Okay, so you're just going to make your food and what I suggest is see how much your baby actually eats at the time that you are making the food because um, you don't you only want to freeze portions that they're going to eat, right? Like the, even the squeeze station has little lines on it and right now Tanner is eating uh, almost four ounces of food at a time so I go to the second line so it's two four and six ounces on this so if you wanted to use like it just figure out how many ice cubes of whatever size obviously these are big that these might actually be four ounce little cubes I'm not sure um but you can figure out how many ice cubes that your baby eats at a time and freeze that much so you don't have to thaw extra you know don't freeze like one huge container because you don't want to have it sitting in the fridge and fermenting and then once it so you freeze it in the ice cube trays once it's frozen put it in a ziploc bag and it's that easy you just pull it out and thaw out one cube at a time and most likely your baby will go through it fast enough to not get freezer burnt if you go crazy and make a whole bunch of different kinds, it is possible that it, ooh, it is possible that it will get freezer burnt. So just make sure that you're rotating through your baby food. All right. So the last storage method, which several people like that don't like to use plastic is mason jars. Okay. I'm not a huge glass advocate for kids. I mean, it's fine, but they do get broken and I'd rather put jam in it or whatever than um, have baby food in there. Now, if they're really young and he's, they're not going to be grabbing at you or something, then, and you have control over it, then great. Um, but mason jars, if you fill them, make sure there's headroom because remember things expand as they freeze. So, um, oh, and pro tip, <laughs> peanut butter lids fit onto regular mouth mason jars. So it, these are the small, peanut, not the big peanut butter lids, the small ones. Um, they fit onto all regular mouth mason jars. So if you wanted to put a plastic lid on there for the freezer, then that is a great option. Okay, so that's it. It's that easy. We, um, we really don't use anything that special. Like I said, we've been making baby food for 10 years for four different kids and I've even helped, um, I've helped some of my relatives and friends with recipes and everything and we just, it is something I'm very passionate about. I love making baby food. I love ba making baby food recipes. The stuff in the stores, well, it's great that it's there and it is an option. I just hate the taste of it. It's, it's not my cup of tea. So I would much prefer to make my own, know exactly what's going into my kids until, you know, they get older and start eating junk food. <laughs> but, um, yeah, huh? uh, but anyways, I just want you guys to take control. If you are worried about our supply chains, like everybody else is right now, take control of what you can. If, if, and this is something that you can take control of. I know you can. It's, it's so simple, even if it's just putting baby food in an ice cube tray and freezing it, you know, it's that easy. So um, we will start, uh, our next video will be on a recipe, and I'm not sure which one yet, but we will put one together and it'll be super fun. If you guys like this video and you want to see more uh, uh, about making baby food, then please like and subscribe and share with all of your friends. Have a blessed day. Bye! Tanner, say bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.